Welcome to the Jamestown First Baptist Church Worship Hour. Established in 1930, the First Baptist Church has been instrumental in spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ across the Cumberland Mountains. An aggressive local missions program has assisted in establishing sister churches in Fentress County, the Pickett State Park area, and Morgan County. With programs to minister to the individual and the family, we invite you to join with us in our live worship service. Deacon's meeting this evening at 5 o'clock. Uh, be sure to not forget that. And uh, got Miss Leslie Holt with us today. And she's going to be a, speaking to us here in a few minutes. And hearing these other lovely ladies. We're glad to have them with us this morning. And uh, let's just uh, worship the Lord together this morning and ask God's richest blessings upon this service today. Let's go ahead and go to God in prayer. And then uh, we'll get started. Heavenly Father, we just come to you today. We thank you and we praise you, God, for. Uh, just your wonderful love. We thank you, Father, for your uh, just your blessings that you give us, God. And we ask you, Lord, that you would just uh, have your way here this morning. We pray, Father, that you would just uh, uh, bless each person, God, that's uh, uh, made it out this morning on this rainy day. We just ask you, Lord, that you would just bless them. Ask you, Father, that you would just help us, Lord, as we uh, worship you together today. And Father, we just praise you. We thank you, God, for everything that you do. This we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. My ask Brother Gerald Huddleston to come this morning to read some scripture. Good morning. Good morning. We need to be in prayer for our revival, and we need to be in prayer for our nation. Today I'll be reading from 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 through 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brother. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that those would bless me indeed and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and thou wouldst keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that he request. That's from the King James Version. At this time, I will ask the men to come forward and take the morning offering. <coughs> Joe, would you ask the blessing on the morning offering, please? Father, well, we come together today in your honor. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings that you've given us. Each of us, we especially thank the Lord for this church. The Lord, we just ask you to be with us and God direct us as we uh, go out in the world and that we might be a, a good minister for you. God, as we come this time, we ask you to bless this offering with your glory and your good use. We ask you to uh, give us continued blessings for the leadership of God. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Leslie to come forward. But um, this is going to be an exciting summer for us here at First Baptist and a lot of the other churches in the area. Acts 1 8 says, You'll be witnesses to me into Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the othermost part of the earth. It doesn't say into Jerusalem or Judea or Samaria. What does it say? And. So this morning, right after the service this morning, right down front here, we're going to have a short meeting. It will last no longer than three minutes. But those who are interested in one of our three mission opportunities, I have a clipboard, and we're going to let you either sign, yes, you want to go, or you just want more information. And the three opportunities are the Memphis mission trip, the Gap, which is our Jerusalem, Memphis is Judea, and Samaria will be, we're going to New England. So there's the three possibilities, or you can go to all three. So, Ms. Leslie? Commercial for our local missions. <laughs> I hope you guys vote for the local one. No, they're they're all important. But thank you so much for the opportunity to come and speak a few minutes. I am Leslie Holt. I'm the director of a local mission that you may not be aware of, but you have partnered with us for 19 years, and this will be our 20th year. So y'all need to give yourselves a round of applause. You have been. You have been integral and instrumental in helping every year in some aspect. Now, inside your bulletin, there was a little brochure that has got a, a, quite a bit of information, and I'm not going to go through all of it. I just want to kind of touch on the most important things this morning, be very brief, and there is contact information on the back that if you have any more questions, you feel free to talk to me about it or call me, uh, email me, text me, whatever, because it's all there, and I'll be glad to do an answer and, and, and help you in any way. But anyway, inside your brochure, under the general information, if you'll look at that for just a second, I kind of wanted to um, skip down to what it says, who do we help? Anybody in Fentress County who is disadvantaged, disabled, in need in some way, and we do safe interest county only. So we, we stay in county with our mission. And we are not new, as I told you just a few minutes ago, uh, 19 years of service, 20 this year, and we're so thankful to God for that. We have accomplished in those 19 years 424 projects with 1,111 workers and spent over $120,000 in county. And you all, like I said, have been instrumental in that. Believe me when I say that. So glory to God on all of that. And like I said, y'all can kind of read through all this other. I want to really go up to the kind of the middle of, this, of the brochure there. It says, what can I do to help? This year, we are, again, we will be celebrating our 20th year, uh, being hosted by Church of the Harvest in Grimsley. And as of right now, I can tell you what we need really, really, really bad is we need some more people to help with meals. So right now, we need two suppers. There's two suppers that haven't been claimed. And... There are three breakfasts that haven't been claimed. So if, if you know that you're, you love to cook, get you three or four others to help you, and I'll put you in touch with Elaine Seymour, and it's downhill from there. <laughs> Easy peasy. So anyway, we really could use some help with that. Um, the uh, workers pay $75 a head to come in and work, and out of that... 16 meals are provided, and along with paying for all the materials to do the work at the home site. So um, last year, God really blessed, and our grocery bill was the lowest it's ever been because we had so many churches coming in to help. And that, so if you, if you can see your way clear, and if you would love to, to help out in, in the meal preps like that, that would be amazing. We could really use it. Um, if you have any questions, I, I don't, if you've had time to look at the brochure, like I said, just look down through there. I'll hang around a little bit after service if anybody's got any questions. And um, I brought a, a wonderful lady with me who has been instrumental in working on a team as an adult leader. And I kind of wanted her to give her perspective on what it's like to lead these young people out on a work site. 
because that is full of adventure and full of blessings. So I welcome Miss B. Warpel. Thank you, First Baptist Church, for having us today. Um, I just want to say that uh, God moves in mysterious ways, and with me, he really did. Uh, Miss Leslie tried to get me to work on GAP for many years, and I said, no, no, I don't think I can deal with young people. <laughs> and uh, I said, you know, I don't want to go to jail for doing something. <laughs> so uh, anyway... The Lord just tugged at my heartstrings and tugged and says, you know, you have the ability, you need to get out there and help. So I said, Leslie, I can't say no to the Lord anymore, so all, I do, all I'm going to do now is pray for patience and that I can get out there. Well, I tell you what, it's been the greatest experience of my life. I've never done anything like this before. I have some basic skills in a little carpentry, painting, and that kind of thing. I said, well, I can hold my own with that. But I tell you what, some of the young people we have had with our GAP program come in, some of them, really, this is the truth, don't even know how to hold a screwdriver. But by the time I get through with them, the week, they're using drills and saws and under supervision, everything. It's amazing. I've had students that uh, want to hang back and not do much, you know. But then I've had other students take over and teach them the next year. I had one little boy that didn't know anything. I taught, worked with him all, all that week. The next year, he took over the team and was teaching them. And to see this happen in these young people, it's just a miracle. The other thing is how they are so kind and with the homeowners, and they pray with them and hug on them. And I just see young people. I see kids turn into young adults in a week. It's, it's been the most amazing experience of my life. And I would uh, like to see more people get involved to, to help these young people because it, it, is, such a, it is such a miracle that, that happens that week. All our uh, devotions in the morning and our evening worship services are all geared to kids, but... I think I get as much out of it as anybody. It's, it's just amazing what they can do. Um, I don't know how many years I can do this, but the Lord helps me and keeps me healthy. I'm going to do it as long as Miss Leslie's going to have the program, and I think she's going to go on forever, which is great. She's um, only 39. <laughs> right. And uh, and, uh, but again, thank you for having us, and it is truly, GAP is truly a blessing for everyone involved, and I would like to see some of y'all there this year. Thank you very much. I've also asked Jubilee to come up and talk a little bit about what it's like to be a youth person working in GAP, because this is what, they, they're the ones, the adults and the youth, they're the ones that GAP's all about, so. Okay, so first off, I'm going to start by saying anything that we can say today does not do GAP justice. It's that amazing. Um, you know, some of the people, like, who have been on the Memphis mission trip, you, you start out and it's the hardest thing you've ever done, but then you leave and you don't want to leave. You never want to leave those kids. And then with, you know, with GAP, it's not so much about the kids as it's about, like, the homeowners. I mean, they're the, some of the sweetest people you'll ever meet. And you, know, you don't know this because they're stuck in their houses with their nurses all day and they can't do anything. And so, you know, honestly, seeing their smile at the end, of, like once you finish your job, seeing them look at it and they're like, that's where I live? Or, whoa, I can move again. Because like, sometimes we build ramps for those in wheelchairs who can't get out of the house because they don't have ramps and you know, everything stairs. Um, and then there's also just the coming closer to God. Like she was talking about having the devotions. You know, all these kids, you know, we get to learn more about Jesus and we get to have more interaction with him and with other people who have interactions with God. And it's just an amazing experience. And honestly, this is like my fourth or fifth year and I'm going to do it as long as I possibly can. So. You know, the spiritual aspect is just amazing about how God shows up in, in just in every little nook and cranny of the GAP program. 
and the worship services, like she's like B said, it, and the devotions are just so uplifting. She thinks she gets all, I get more than y'all do out of it. I'm telling you, it's just such a blessing. But uh, I, I want to leave you with a funny note. Um, one year, it's not been too long ago, um, the kids came in from work, and this one little girl, the first year she'd ever worked gap, and she came in, and she was a hot mess. I'm telling you, she was just melted. And she bounced into that kitchen, and Miss Leslie, Miss Leslie, you'll just never get, you'll just never believe in a hundred years what I got to do today. And I thought, oh man, she's been out there working with power tools, or she has just absolutely just done something just amazing. And she, her, her little face was just a glow, and she said, I pushed the lawnmower. I mowed a yard today. <laughs> and of course, I was going, oh, well, great, you know. But a lot of these kids, are they've just never experienced what it, what it is to lay hands to much of anything in the way of manual labor. So they do get to do a lot of things. I saw a little girl that was, you know, not even 100 pounds soaking wet. I saw her running this big power tool, and it was running her, but that was hilarious. We had it on the, the video. But... Uh, they learn so much about how to mow your hearts. I mean, my goodness, or how to clean or pick up or just, just basic skills, not to, not to mention about what God, God does to their hearts and what he does to our hearts. So, um, yes, missions do begin at home. Keep that in mind. And if you feel God's tugging you to do a home local mission, Give us a call. We'll be right there to help you through. And again, thank you, Mr. Gary, for the invitation to be here. God bless y'all. And believe it or not, Jubilee is not 29 every week. Let's all stand. We're going to pray. Get your little chorus sheets out. We still will have the projector probably a few more weeks. Get your little chorus sheets out. You probably will need it for this. No, they tell me
please have a seat. sheets out.
And sin I sank low Then I heard about Jesus What a wonderful hour I'm so glad that I found out That he would bring me out Through his holy power Thank God I am free Taking his flight like a blind man that God gave back his sight, like a poor wretched beggar that found fortune and fame. I'm so glad that I found out he would bring me out through his holy name. Thank God I am free. go from here. Thank God I'm saved. I'm glad I'm saved, aren't you? Uh, well, thank you ladies and thank you choir for those uh, beautiful songs this morning and uh, certainly kind of great honor just to have my family to sing this morning and uh, uh, I guess I'm a little bit partial to them. Uh, that's all right, isn't it? You're probably partial to yours too, I'm sure. So. If you're not, you should be, all right? All right. If you have a Bible this morning, let's look together for just a few minutes. And First Chronicles, what Brother Gerald read to us this morning, First Chronicles, the fourth chapter. Uh, a very familiar passage, at least it was a few years ago, uh, when, the, when the book came out, The Prayer of Jabez. And... Uh, Whoever came out with that, I'm sure they made a lot of money. And uh, it was a very popular book. And, uh, I mean, there was people buying uh, the prayer of Jabez, uh, little pictures and books and all, everything in the world that said the prayer of Jabez, it was very popular a few years ago. And uh, I want to preach a message on these verses this morning. And I'll read them th again this morning, beginning in verse number 9, and just share with you a few thoughts from the Word of God this morning and hope to be a, a blessing to you. First Chronicles 4, again in verse 9, it says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, 
that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Father, we thank you this morning. We just praise your holy name today. We thank you and we praise you, God, for what our ears have already heard. And we thank you, Father, for this wonderful group of people today. We ask you, Lord, that you would just help us, God, as we glean from your scriptures. We pray, Father, that you would just use us in a mighty, miraculous way to bring glory and honor and praise to none other than our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. May we lift him up in this place as we preach his word. Father, we thank you, we praise you, God, for everything that you do. We know, God, that you're in complete control. My, what a wonderful God we serve. What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Lord. I pray, Father, that you'd help us right now. This we ask, God, in your wonderful holy name. Amen. 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 You know, there's things in life that I will never have or accomplish. Simply because a lot of times we, that we don't even ask is the reason that we don't accomplish things in life. Very few people, as we found out, very few people in life actually make an impact on society probably can't think of too many people. There's very few people that's ever made an, a drastic impact on society. You know, there's nothing satisfied, there's nothing wrong with being, being satisfied with your job and, and what you're doing and the accomplishments that you may make in life, but there is something wrong with being satisfied with what we're doing for God right now. We could always be doing something better. We could always be doing more. So I don't want us just to be satisfied with what we're doing. I want us to have an impact for the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to speak to you this morning on our comfort zone our comfort zone. We find in this passage that we read this morning that Jabez was not satisfied with his comfort zone. Now most people are. Most people are satisfied with their comfort zone and there's something wrong with that when we're serving God. We don't never need to be satisfied. We don't never need to be comfortable because if we're comfortable where we're at right now, we're probably not doing anything much at all. But if you're having an impact for God, you're getting out of your comfort zone. Can I get a witness there? And whenever you get out of the place that you're at in your comfort zone, sometimes it's not going to be pleasing, but that's going to be honorable to God. And Jabez, he wanted to be different, we find in this passage. He wanted to be different than his brethren. And the Bible says that he was more honorable. He was more honorable. He was more honest. He was more moral. He was more upright and upstanding than any of his other brethren. Do you want to be that way? Can, can I tell you this morning, the only way that we're going to be that way is to get out of our comfort zone. Jabez was not satisfied with what he saw going on around him. He wanted to have an impact on the people around him. I want to live in the impact zone and not the comfort zone. I want to have an impact on society. I want to have an impact on my family. I want to have an impact on this church. I want to have an impact on the people that hears us by television, radio. I want to have an impact for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And I don't want to be comfortable in what I'm doing. I want to have an impact for God. Zig Ziglar said, aim at nothing, he said, and you're sure to hit it. And that's the, that's the motive, that's the mentality that we, a lot of us have. We don't aim for anything. Therefore, we're sure to hit it. We need just to get out of where we're at and start doing something for God. 
We need to quit being satisfied. We need to be, quit being satisfied of where we're at. I want you to notice here this. I want to look at three things in verse number 9 about Jabez and his personality. And we find all three of these things. And I believe that they're noteworthy this morning in verse number, three, verse number 9, if you'll follow along with us this morning. We find something about this man's life. First of all, I want to point out to you this morning his, his place in life. The Bible says that he, that he was, as I said, he was more honorable than his brother. I hear, a, or there's a very few people that just simply just rise above the crowd. There's, a very, there's very few people in the world that leaves a mark on the world like this man. I mean, he was, he was, there was nothing extraordinary about him, but he wanted to be different. He wanted to be more honorable. He wanted to be an outstanding man for God. Let's look at his life, this, his place in life. You know, most of us are, are content with what we're doing. That's why we're doing what we're doing. Because we're content with what we're doing. Jabez wasn't that type of person. Jabez was not the type of, not, not this man. He wanted to rise above his brethren. He wanted to have an impact for God. Do you want to have an impact for God? Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of your comfort zone. You say, well, preacher, I, I'm, a, I'm an old man or I'm an old woman. That doesn't make any difference. Maybe you've been living like Moses. You've been living in your comfort zone for 40 years and it's time to get out of your comfort zone. Start living for God. We find in the scriptures that Moses, he was 80 years old and before God started using him. You're not too old. As long as you're, you're still breathing, aren't you? Everybody's still breathing, right? I want to tell you this morning, I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are this morning. You can have an impact for God. We're just used to living comfortable. We like, we like being comfortable, don't we? Do you like being comfortable this morning? Well, certainly you do. But I want to tell you this morning, living for God is, is not always being comfortable. That's right. we, just, we need to have an impact for God. We need to have an impact on society. Maybe you, need to, maybe you need to take part in Gap this summer. I don't know. Maybe you just need to get out of your, out of your comfort zone and have an impact on this world and on this community. We find that Jabez, he was not content with what he saw around him. He was not content with what was going on around, around him. Wouldn't it be a tragedy in your life just to come down to the end of your life and you didn't have an impact on anyone? Didn't have an impact on no one, not even your family, your church, or anyone around you. You know there's a lot of people that way. A lot of people have have never, even in this church, has never shared your faith with anyone. They appreciate that. I, I just can't do that. I'm, that. I'm not comfortable doing that. God didn't say that it was going to be comfortable, but God said do it. Right? I, are we not supposed to share our faith with other, other people? Are we not supposed to get out of our comfort zone? You know, a lot of times it's not comfortable with me to share it the Lord Jesus Christ with people, especially those that are closest to me. But I want to tell you this morning, God never called us to be comfortable. God called us to have an impact on society. God called us to have an impact on this world. This is our Jerusalem. We give up on our Jerusalem, we just well as to give up on the rest of the world. God called us to have an impact on society. We find here in about Jabez and his personality. We find out about his, his place in life. You know, we should never be satisfied like everyone else is. But, you know, you can be different this morning. God, God wants you to be different. Jabez, he wanted to be different. He wanted to stick out among the crowd. Not that he wanted to get any 
any popularity and he didn't want to stick out that way, but he wanted God to be honored in his life. We see his, his place in life. But not only that, I see in this verse his, his problem in life. And by the way, when you serve God, you're going to have problems in your life. It's not going to be, as some people say, it's not going to be all hunky-dory. I want to tell you when, you, when you serve God, you're going to have problems in life. His mother named him Jabez. Jabez. This name literally means the son of my sorrow. The son of my pain, affliction. And it means he will cause pain. Jabez. It's almost as bad as being called Earl. I mean, this man here, it wasn't an honorable name that his mother gave him. But he didn't let that sidetrack him. He didn't let that detour him from having an impact on the world. We see his, his problem in life. Many people would take a name like that and figure that they were doomed from the start. Not Jabez. Not, no, not this man. We have the power of the Holy Spirit to break out and I want, you, I want to tell you this morning, church, that we have a, the power within us to make an impact on this church, on this society, on this county this morning. Jabez, we see his, his problem in life. Jacob, we looked at the man Jacob in the Bible. His name means trickster or supplanter. But God changed his name to Israel, which means a prince with God. And I tell you, it doesn't matter what your name is. It doesn't make any difference what your job is. Our job as a Christian is to make an impact on this world. We find his, his problem in life, he was, he was named Jabez. They called him Jabez. You can rise above your past, regardless of what you've done. Don't let your past hinder you from making an impact from here on, here on out, okay? But you can rise above your past and the circumstances of your life. You can do that. Some of you may have heard of the woman Wilma Rudolph. Remember that name? She was a successful Olympic athlete in the 1960s. But some of you may not know her story. She was born the 16th of 18 children in a poor black family in Clarksville, Tennessee, weighing only four pounds and one ounce. At the age of 14, she contracted polio and lost the use of, of her left leg. The battle with polio left her weakened as she uh, immediately developed chronic pneumonia and scarlet fever. Even though she managed to survive those deadly diseases, she spent the bulk of her childhood as a cripple. It was only through years of therapy which her mother carried her six days a week and determination that Wilma would, reign, would regain the use of her left leg. She went on to play high school basketball, setting a single season record of 803 points in 25 games. In 1960, Wilma Rudolph represented the United States in the Olympic Games, which was held in Rome, Italy, and she won gold medals in three of the events that she competed in. In both the 100-meter dash and the 200-meter dash, she finished three yards in front of the closest competitor. She tied the world record in the 100-meter and set a new Olympic record in the 200-meter. And in the 400-meter relay, she brought her team from behind and won the gold. At the least, we can say that Wilma Rudolph she rose above her circumstances. I mean, this, this woman here, she had problems in life, and I want to tell you that we all have them. But we, we're, we're called to have an impact on this world. We're called to have an impact on life. We see Jabez's personality, his place in life, his problem in life, but 
We see his performance in life in verse 9. Jabez, he looked at his brethren and where they were living and decided that he could do better. You know what? We, we just need to quit looking at what everybody else is doing. We need to quit looking at, about what everyone else is doing and focus on what we're supposed to be doing. We're not going to answer for anyone but ourselves. We're not going to stand before God one day and say, Well, you know, so and so. They, they kept me from doing this. Do you think that excuse will work? When God has commissioned and called us and have an impact on this world. Jabez, he was, he was not remembered as a great leader. Jabez was not remembered as a great prophet. He did not make his mark on the battlefields as some of the men in the Bible did. His, his name is remembered because that he was a man of prayer. Now maybe God has just called you to be a, a person of prayer. I don't care what your calling is, what God has placed on your life, start doing it. Quit living comfortable. I don't want you to sit in this pew Sunday after Sunday and stay comfortable. We need to get outside these four walls if we're going to make an impact Amen. on this world. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be making an impact and that's what Jabez wanted to do. We see his performance in life. He's remembered because that he was a man of prayer. We find in verse, verse number 10, Jabez in his prayer in verse 10, he prayed for prosperity. Not like what we think. He didn't pray, give me, give me, give me, as some of us pray. God, give me, give me, give me, give me. Every time that we pray a lot of times, God, we want this, we want that. That's not really what Jabez was praying. Jabez's prayer was, was prosperity in twofold. First, he prays that the Lord, Lord's fullest blessings be upon his life. And secondly, he prays that his boundaries would ex be extended. He asked for God's best. There's nothing wrong with asking for God's best in the right way. There's nothing wrong with asking for God's blessings to be upon your life. And who among us this morning don't want that? We all want God's best for our life. I hope you do. Jabez, he wanted God's bless for his the best for him. He wanted that in his life. Whoever told you, I've heard people say, well, you're, you're not supposed to pray for yourself. Says who? That, that's a lie of the devil. Jabez was praying for himself. He said, God, he said, I want you to increase. Not my bank account. Not my wealth. He said, God, increase my coast. In other words, God, help me to have a greater impact. That's what we need. We need a greater impact. Can I get a witness there? Amen. Is there anyone out there this morning? Say amen. amen. All right. I'm just making sure you're still awake. We need to have an impact, folks. We need to have an impact in Jabez's prayer that God would increase his coast. That was his prayer. We need just to break away from our ordinary if we're going to have an impact on God's kingdom. That's what Jabez wanted for his life. We find here that he asked for God's bless, or asked for God's best. And not only that, but I find in verse number 10 that he asks this for God's blessing. God, bless my effort. I want to tell you this morning, if you'll put forth an effort, what God has called you to do, He'll not ask you to do anything you can't do. Now, I've heard people say, well, I know what, I'm, I know what God's wanting me to do, but I can't do it. <laughs> you heard it. You've probably said that. I, I've said that before. 
But I want to tell you that that doesn't make any sense. If God, if God has called you to do something, He's going to equip you and He's going to be, help you be able to do what He's called you to do. He'll not ask you to do something you can't do. Amen. Well, so whatever God has commissioned you, whatever God has asked you to do in life, get out of your comfort zone and have an impact on society. That's what Jabez wanted to do. He wanted God's blessings on his life. I want God's blessings on my life. But the only way that God is going to bless us if we get out of our comfort zone yeah. is start having an impact. And the only way that we can do that is be right with God. If you're not right with God, you cannot have an impact on society. They will. how do you do that? Well, the Bible says in 1 John 1.9, if we confess our sin, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sin. Do you believe, do you believe the Bible? Yes. And He says, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. Hey, listen. Listen. We're not perfect. None of us have arrived yet. And I want to tell you, we all mess up, but we need to have a clean slate before God if we're going to have an impact on society. Maybe you're here this morning, you, you say, Preacher, I'm saved. I'm not where I'm supposed to be with God. You need to come and pray this morning. Right. You say, Well, Preacher, I, I've never been saved. You surely need to come and pray this morning. Right. Whatever your need is. Maybe, maybe you need to join this church. I don't, know what, I don't know what your need is this morning, but if you have one, God will meet that need. Yeah. If you can have an impact on this world. Oh, I'd like to see everybody in Fenters County say, wouldn't you? Yeah. And there's a lot of people I don't really like much. <laughs> but I don't want them to go to hell. I want to see them say. Right. God said you didn't have to like them. You've got to love them, though. Yeah. How can you love them if you don't like them? I don't know, but <laughs> anyway. I'm going to get Brother Gary to come this morning. If you've got a need, I want us to stand this morning. Let's all stand. Whatever, you're, whatever you need this morning, God said, He said He will supply according to His riches and glory through Christ. He'll do that. Whatever the need is, maybe it's a, a need of rededication. Maybe you're not where you're supposed to be with God. God will meet you here. And if you're here this morning, and you're not saved, you've never asked the Lord Jesus Christ to be Lord and Master of your life, He'll meet that need this morning. He'll do it. Maybe you're here this morning and you've been coming to this church and maybe you, you feel like you need to join this church this morning. Listen, God wants you to do that. You feel like that's what you need to do this morning. We kind of great honor to make you part of this church this morning. If you come over one time, we, you're just one of us anyway. But we'd like to have your name on the road. Whatever the need is this morning, while Brother Gary sings, while we're honest with God, while he, while he starts singing, won't you get out of that pew this morning, right as we start singing, make your way down this altar this morning, make things right, whatever the need is. Just as Gary sings, come right on. used to say in life when you was uh, maybe just a young Christian God I'll do anything that you want me to do 
I'll go wherever you want me to go. I'll, I'll witness to whoever you want me to witness to. I'll do anything you want me to do, God. A lot of us didn't mean that. Here's what we really mean. I'll do anything that you want me to do as long as it's not any more than I'm already doing. Get out of your comfort zone, church. Get out of your comfort zone. Make, make an impact on society. Leave an impact on this world when you're, when you're gone. Like Jabez. Said. Sing one more stanza while these ladies pray. He drew me closer to His side. I sought His will to know. And in that will I now abide. Father, we just come to you this morning. We thank you. We praise you, God. For you. Thank you, Father, most of all for your Son, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for what he means to us. Thank you, Father, for just this service that you've allowed us just to come together again today, just to worship our Savior. And I ask you, Father, that you would just bless the remainder of this day. I pray, Father, that you would just Help us as we go out of this place today. Help us, God, from this day forward to have an impact 